everybody! Today we are going to be talking all about metabolic bone disease in bearded dragons. What it is, what causes it, and how not really to treat it, but how to prevent it from getting worse. Metabolic bone disease, or hyperparathyroidism, is an umbrella term for uh, skeletal structure disorders due to a lack of calcium. It's known as MBD for short, and it can affect all sorts of different parts of the body, and it can take many shapes or different forms. It can cause rubbery legs, the inability to use legs, it can cause kinks in the spine or in the tail, it can cause a hunchback, it can cause uh, soft bones and underbite, even seizures and paralysis. In some cases, it's so severe that really it ends up in euthanasia of the animal. We have two bearded dragons with us today that were dropped off or surrendered to our adoption program, and they have pretty severe cases of MBD. First, this is Garfield. He is an approximately two-year-old bearded dragon, and his MBD affected him in several different ways, unfortunately. As you can see, he has an underbite here. It's not a severe one, not as bad as an underbite as I've seen in the past with bearded dragons. He also, unfortunately, has rubbery legs, and they definitely don't seem to have much muscle mass. He can't really carry his body or hold his body weight with his back legs, so he kind of shuffles around on them instead. He thankfully does have a good grip with his front legs, which helps make up for it, and he has a huge personality and loves to head bob and show off and eat, so we decided, you know, we're gonna give him a chance. He does need to gain weight. I'm assuming he's thin because he can't access his food as well as he should be able to, so he needs some TLC. But we decided not to euthanize him because he... Oh, there's another beardy head bobbing in the background at him right now. He'll get... Calm Poor down, man. goober. Okay. Oh, he's probably... Anyway. So we decided we're going to give him a shot and just find him a really good, experienced home. Calm down! Jeez! Goober, right. it's just a bearded dragon! And this is Lasagna. He is about a six-month-old bearded dragon who al already has MBD, and pretty severely too. His back legs are essentially useless. He holds them out to the side. There's no muscle mass to them. He has some kinks in his tail, and he has a stubby tail at that. He also, just like Garfield, has a bit of an underbite there. He's also a bit underweight, but his biggest thing are that these back legs are very scrawny and don't support much of his weight either. As you can probably guess, Lasagna and Garfield were housed together for, it sounds like, the majority of their lives, and as a result, lasagna here is also missing a couple of toes. So this is just a great example of why you should house bearded dragons separately. Yes. Especially different sizes like that. Yeah. Now that we've talked about what MBD looks like in bearded dragons, let's talk about what causes it. It's essentially a calcium deficiency, and this can be due to lack of calcium in their diets, obviously. It can also be caused by a lack of vitamin D3 or a lack of proper UVB light. All three of these tiers, calcium, D3, and UVB, all actually work together in order for dragons to properly form their bones. UVB lighting enables dragons to produce vitamin D3, and D3 is used to metabolize the calcium in their diets. So if you give dragons calcium, but not UVB, they can't produce vitamin D3 in order to metabolize that calcium, so it's essentially like not even giving them calcium at all. Another thing that causes MBD is actually too much phosphates or oxalates in their diet, both of which in inhibit them from being able to absorb calcium. And we'll talk a little bit more about those later. Since MBD is often caused by lack of vitamin D3, you may have heard of supplements that contain added D3 in them, and can those be used in place of UVB? The simple answer is no, D3 supplements don't work as effectively on bearded dragons as they do on other more nocturnal species like leopard geckos. Leopard geckos are able to absorb the D3 from those supplements and use it to metabolize calcium, whereas bearded dragons, it's much more effective D3 if they create it themselves using UVB lights. So by using artificial UVB lights inside for your dragons or bringing them outside to get natural vitamin D from the sun, which is actually so much better than the artificial bulbs that are on the market right now, we at Snake Discovery don't recommend using vitamin D3 supplements because you can overdose your dragon with D3. This is, of course, unless you're recommended otherwise by a qualified veterinarian. Next, let's talk about how to prevent metabolic bone disease in bearded dragons. First and foremost, make sure they have adequate UVB lighting. Whether indoors with artificial UVB bulbs or outdoors, which is actually a lot more efficient or effective for bearded dragons, like if you can get your dragons outside on nice sunny days for just a couple hours a week, it'll make a huge difference 
and it'll expose them to so much more UVB than they would get indoors with just artificial lighting. It's generally recommended to give your dragons about 12 hours a day of artificial indoor light, with the fluorescent tube light, that is. However, if you've been using that fluorescent tube bulb for about six to eight months with most brands, then you do have to replace that bulb even though it does turn on. That's because the UVB will have run out at that time. Some brands like Arcadia bulbs, which we actually carry in our store and highly recommend, have UVB that lasts 12 months, so you only have to change your bulb once a year. Additionally, you have to make sure that your bearded dragon has close access to your UVB lights. This means giving them structures to climb on that bring them up to about six to eight inches away from the UVB bulb. You can actually look up bearded dragons or any reptile species on the Arcadia website, and this isn't sponsored by the way, by Arcadia. They just have really good products. You can use their website. They have a calculator that tells you the distance from the UVB bulb your reptile should have access to, along with the correct bulb you should be getting for your species. And finally, there should be little to no barriers between the UVB bulb and your reptile. A glass lid on your tank, for example, is going to cut out UVB, and that's why bearded dragons can't get any UVB even if their enclosure is placed near a window. The glass just cuts off the UVB rays completely. Even screen lids will cut off some UVB, which is why certain brands will promote the fact that their screens only cut off whatever percentage of UVB compared to the other brands out there. And finally, the other great way to avoid MVD is to make sure their diets don't contain much phosphorus or oxalates. Phosphorus and oxalates uh, it prohibit them from being able to absorb calcium in their diet, so it's essentially like not giving them calcium if their diet is high in phosphorus or oxalates. And basically, you can avoid phosphorus by giving them a calcium that is low in it, and they will actually say that on the label, low in phosphorus. Make sure you look for that one. As far as oxalates go, just avoid greens that are high in them, like spinach. That's why spinach is not recommended for bearded dragons. Yes, they can eat it, technically, but the oxalates will prevent them from absorbing the calcium in that salad, so it kind of negates the purpose of offering any calcium dusting if it's on spinach. So they'll get skinny, but they won't absorb calcium. Exactly. And finally, let's talk about how to fix MBD, or metabolic bone disease. Unfortunately, you can't fix it. The damage has already been done. However, you can prevent it from getting worse by fixing their environment and their diet. If you have recently acquired a bearded dragon that has a pretty bad case of MBD, I recommend bringing it to a vet to see what they recommend at that point. Hopefully it's not bad enough that euthanasia is necessary. Hopefully they're still hanging on there and have enough spirit to live and still can move around enough to access their food. And sometimes a vet will recommend a vitamin D3 injection initially just to kind of kickstart it back in their system, but then you'll be taking it on from there with proper lighting and proper diet. You can also if you've recently acquired an MBD dragon, just make sure you double check everything in their environment, especially the UVB. How new is the bulb? Make sure it's within six months or a year for Arcadia. Make sure they have access to the UVB bulb that they can get close enough and so on and so forth. You can also give them a diet full of calcium by offering leafy greens that naturally have high calcium levels. Veggies that are naturally high in calcium include prickly pear, cactus leaves, uh, mustard greens, and even squash. So you can use those as a staple diet even for a healthy dragon, but a especially with one that has MBD, so you can prevent it from getting any worse. Also, it should go without saying, but make sure their food, whether it's their salad or their insects, is frequently um, dusted with a calcium powder to make sure they have enough calcium in their diets first of all. But that pretty much covers MBD, what it looks like, what causes it, how to prevent it, and how to kind of treat it. Well, really just prevent it from getting any worse. With these two cases here, we're going to work with a little bit longer and then try to find them very experienced homes. They'll probably need a modified environment that doesn't require much climbing since they do. They, they can't climb as well as a normal healthy dragon could. This guy isn't as bad, so I have higher hopes for this younger dude here, Lasagna. Garfield, though, is going to need a very special home. So this video will probably get posted in about two weeks. So feel free to stop by our store and check out Adoption Island and see if they're still available or if we have a new special needs bearded dragon available because we've gotten quite a few surrendered lately that have MBD. But yeah, I hope you all learned something new today and uh, enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for watching it, by the way. And as always, thank you to our amazing Patreon backers because your funds allow us to do so much with these rescues, including a special case we have right here. This is Gooberhead. He doesn't have MBD at all. Instead, he has tail rot and he needs a partial tail amputation so we're going to talk all about tail rot aren't we yeah, yeah in an upcoming video so stay tuned and we'll see you next time